We're going to discuss using a random number table to simulate an event. Lesson 15.7b, we're up to 19 previous videos for Chapter 15, and there's a link to a Chapter 15 playlist in the description. So, a random number table, here's a random number table. It's just a table with a bunch of random numbers. You can see how this one's organized. The digits are in groups of five, and we've got rows, okay? So that's a random number table. And we can use one of these to simulate an event and determine experimental probability. And a random number table can be used to simulate many probabilities other than one. We can simulate a probability of 0.2 for an event. We can let a 0 and 1 represent the event occurring, and the other digits represent it not occurring. So we could say, if there's a 0 in this 5-digit number, or a 1, then it means the event occurred. If it doesn't have a 0 or 1, we could say it didn't occur. See? A table of random digits can also simulate an event. The table below contains the digits 0 through 9 and was generated so each digit had the same probability of occurring. So we see four rows of 50 digits that are grouped and blocked in fives. Five digits, five digits, five digits. And we can see there's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50 digits in each row. So if there's 50 digits in each row and we have four rows, that's 200 digits. And of 200 digits, there's approximately the same number of each of the digits 0 through 9. So we can count them. For the digit 0, there was 22 of them. For the digit 1, there was 15, and so on. And for a large number of rows, each count would approximate one-tenth of the total number of digits. Okay? So if you have a lot of rows, like, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50, whatever. Okay? So here's our first example. The manager of a tour group company estimates that one-tenth of the people who buy a ticket for a nine-person tour will not show up. So ten tickets are sold for each trip. That way, if one doesn't show up, he's got his nine people, see? What's the probability that more than nine people will show up for a tour? We can model this situation by using our random number table. Letting the digit zero represent a person who doesn't show up for a given tour. Because ten tickets are sold for each tour, a trial will consist of examining ten random numbers. That's ten random groups of ten digits, okay, picked from the table. If one or more zeros appears in the list of ten digits, the manager's policy works. If not, the tour is overbooked. So here we've got a random number table, and our first trial is going to be two groups of these five. We need ten digits. And we can see there's zeros here. We even have a one here. And the second trial has got a zero. The third trial has got zeros. The fourth one doesn't. The fifth one does. See? So if one or more zeros appear in the 10 digit in each trial, the manager's policy works. Okay? So we find 18 of 50 trials, all 10 tourists show up. The probability that more than 9 show up is 18 ths which is, if we multiply them both by 2, 36 one hundredths or 0.36. See? So if we do 50 trials and 18 of them have 10 tourists showing up, then we've got 0.36, okay? So that's how we can use this. We can say, okay, we'll just group two of these together to be 10 digits, okay? A fast food restaurant is giving one of five different toys with the purchase of a child's meal. What's the probability of collecting all five toys in 15 visits to the restaurant? So now because we're going to do 15 visits, what we're going to do is we're going to group three of these five-digit numbers together. So that would be the first trial. That would be the second trial. See? We can divide the digits into pairs of 0 and 1, 2 and 3, 4 and 5, 6 and 7, and then 8 and 9. And that would be the toys. There's five toys. So that would be one toy, two toys, three toys, four toys, five toys. See? By putting them together. Using our random number table, we can look through groups of 15 digits. 
So we've got 15 digits. We've got a 0 and 1. So, yeah, that matched 0 and 1. And we can look through each group of 15 digits and see if they've got any of these pairs. See? If at least one digit of each pair appears, the trial is successful. And starting with row 1 and using 50 trials, there's 42 successes. So we could have a random number table that's this big. Look at this. See? It goes all the way down to row 50. This was pulled out of the back of a math book. And the simulated probability of collecting all five toys would be 42 successes out of the 50 trials. If we multiply them by 2, we get 84 over 100. That's 0.84. Okay, so that would be the probability of collecting all five toys in 15 visits. All right, so that's how we can use a random number table. Our next video is extension binomial probabilities, 15.7c. And we're going to do the probability of our successes in a sample of size n. Okay, so you could probably find a table of random numbers online or you might find one in the back of your math book okay but it's very useful i'll see you next time bye